How's it going everyone? We've got a video as promised. We are going to be working on the Tesla for probably the last time for a little bit. But previously we used to run this SCAR SDR8. This subwoofer is rated for 350 watts RMS. And if you buy it as a package, they also send you the RP350.1D. I had that amplifier and subwoofer in the back of my Tesla Model 3 for about two years and it was awesome. It's like the perfect amplifier and subwoofer combo in a stock car that has like a really good sound system already. This car is a standard range, so it doesn't have a subwoofer factory. It was the perfect combo for the car and I really liked it. But as most things are, you usually tend to want more later on. And I used to have sound system stuff growing up when I was a teenager uh, from 212s and, you know, 3,500 watts or 4,000 watts, and extra batteries and stuff like that. So the part of me that used to enjoy that stuff wanted a little bit more for this. So we actually jumped up to the RP1200.1D as the amplifier and then we're doing a loaded uh, 210 enclosure. So we're still staying with SDRs, but the once you jump from an eight to a 10, anything from the 10, 12, 15s, or 18s are a 600 RMS versus the 350 RMS that you find on the eight. A single eight took up a quarter of my trunk space and one half of the trunk space I do not want to give up, but the other half I'm completely fine with giving up. So rather than the single eight or a single 10 taking up a quarter of the trunk, we might as well fill it all the way across. That's why we're doing a, a loaded enclosure with two tens that'll take up the other half. My main reason for only wanting to take up half of the trunk is because I want the other half, which is the front portion to be completely accessible so if there's any issues with anything air ride related, I don't have to worry about moving anything. It's just all right there. I can pick it up and stuff. If you guys saw my last video or two about the air ride install, you know how everything is in the forward part of the trunk and it's all accessible from that portion. So the back half, I'm completely fine with taking up with subs. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna fill that void with these SDR 10s. If you guys don't know who SCAR is, I recommend giving them a check out. Their stuff is extremely affordable and I think it's pretty great quality. So we're gonna open this up. I haven't bought, besides that setup there, that was probably you know 250 or 270 bucks. I haven't bought ex expensive stuff in a while and this is their like, pretty budget friendly stuff, but we're gonna check it out here. And uh, I know already this 1200 watt amplifier I've seen on an amp dyno before, and I believe it did pretty, pretty damn near 2000 watts RMS. So this thing does not play around.
trying not to make this like a review or anything, but immediately taking these out and looking at this surround, it's crazy how beefy it is compared to the eight inch. And I mean, granted the eight inch is broken in, but definitely way stiffer. I cannot wait to get this in the car and see how it sounds. I love the way that SCAR does their boxes. Like they just look really pretty, like prefab boxes with the stitching and stuff on them. Awesome. I think the only way I'm gonna be able to retain keeping this on this panel in the trunk is if I move this up here and then clock the amplifier like this, I'll probably put the power leads on the top. But I think something like this is gonna let me keep it in that location. Otherwise I'd have to like put it on top of the box or something, which I don't want to do because I wanna be able to only have two wires going into the box. That way if I need to take the box out of my trunk for some reason, I can just unhook them put tape around them, throw them to the side, and I don't have to worry about anything else. Now that the amp's bolted on all four corners, I mean, this thing ain't falling off or going anywhere. I'm gonna go put it in the car, just test fit it, make sure it's 100% good. And then I'll see how much room I have for this controller. If I can put it here or maybe even hang it like this or something. I don't know, we'll have to see. As we just saw, it fits in the car great. So what I'm gonna do is offset this a little bit so we have at least one on each side. It should hold it just perfectly fine and it will be out of the way of everything. I'll do some test holes. We'll just bolt it up there real quick, test fit it again. If all is good, I guess we'll just start wiring it up. We got the amplifier in there. Everything is mostly wired up. The power and grounds for the amplifier and the LC2i Pro. Turn on inputs, your signal from your uh, bass speaker in the front. But now the next thing that I need to do, we just put the box in the car. And typically when you'd buy like a amplifier wiring kit, this is the wire you would find in it. The wire here, I don't have an exact way of checking it, but I believe that this is probably a 16 gauge wire, and that's good if you're staying probably under a thousand watts. I would recommend like a 16 or a 14 gauge, but this amplifier is rated for 1200 watts, and I know it puts out more than that, and I'm gonna jump it up to a 12 gauge wire. If I had like 10 gauge or something, I would just do that but I just don't have that. This will hopefully be more than enough. And I've got them in black and red. So my negative and positive coming out of the amplifier, I'm gonna run. I gotta figure out exactly how I wanna run it. The amp is on the right side of the car and the subwoofer input is on the left side of the box. So I gotta figure out how I wanna neatly route that. If in your amplifier kit, you 
only get the 16 gauge, what you can do is you can do two runs of it. So like these, this is a monoblock amplifier, but it has four outputs. You could hook them all into that and then just tie your two positives together and your two negatives together and put them in your push lock terminals. And it'll kind of do the same thing as this, but this way you only have one wire for each positive and negative, whereas that one you'd have two for each positive and negative. I'm gonna get this all wired up and then I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. Amplifier is bolted up in place. It's a little rack that I have there, that plastic piece. It's all bolted up. The grounds are all connected and the amplifier light is on. I haven't buttoned it all up yet because I do have to set the gains at some point. It's actually nighttime right now, so I don't want to make too much noise. And in order to set the gains, I have to have the volume on the sound system all the way up and then I'll unhook the speakers, set the gain that way. But while setting the gain, the little subwoofers in the front doors are gonna be going. So those are loud enough by themselves to disrupt the garage. So the tuning part's gonna have to wait uh, until tomorrow, which for you guys will just be like that. But for right now, I at least wanna see them move. So I've got a 40 hertz test tone track going. I'm gonna unpause the car. It's definitely moving air. Fast forward, next day, here we are. I got the car torn apart again. I put it together last night after the video just to see what it looks like, but I've got the distortion detector here, put the nine volt battery in it from my guitar, and we are good to go. Now what I'm gonna do, because I have to use my phone to Bluetooth to the car to set up the test tracks for setting the gain, uh, I won't be able to record any of that footage, but it's pretty simple. And if you're interested in learning how to use a distortion detector, there's tons of videos on the internet how to do that. So I'm gonna do this real briefly and then I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. Now that the sound system is done and completely back together, I've got a royalty free song and I was playing it at home. It seemed like it had pretty decent bass. So we're going to fire that up now and I'll kind of show you guys what the sound system does. That's the, uh, the sound system. Hopefully it comes across and with the frame rate of the camera and stuff, it'll allow you to actually see how much these visors and this headliner and the windshield is moving because uh, it moves quite a bit. I'm really surprised for 210s on 1200 watts what this uh, sound system actually does. There is some slight issues 
I've had the car together now for probably two days. There's a, a known Tesla issue where the amplifier will trip the DC to DC converter that is used in replacement of an alternator. We'll get into that at a later date. Uh, this is probably gonna wrap it up for this one. So I appreciate you guys hanging out and watching and I'm really stoked with how this setup is uh, sounding. We just gotta fix a couple of the little kinks and um, should be a great sound system. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see ya.